welcome. A cup of coffee to Chris Squire of Yes. Hello. You have been in Canada for, uh, what, the last couple of weeks together with Trevor, working on uh, the 9012 Live project, which uh -huh. was shot back in November in Edmonton. Actually, September. Oh, it was September, was it? September wasn't? in uh, Edmonton, Alberta, yeah. Oh, I thought it was November. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, anyway, from now and again, I make a mistake. So we, um, we, we came here just before Christmas to do some cutting, and uh, then we went to South America, and then we come back to finish the sound and the final edits. Should be done today. That's great. We'll be seeing a clip from 9012 Live in just a couple of minutes, but this was all part of the 90125 tour, which took you to South America. The last time you and I talked with each other, it was on the balcony of the Rio Palace in Certainly Rio de was. Janeiro, and you were just about to launch your very first South American tour. How did that go? That was very, uh, very interesting. Very different down there, you know, it's another world. Um, well, we loved playing in Rio, and um, there were a lot of uh, great performances from uh, many of the bands that went down there. Uh, but after that, we went on to uh, Uruguay and Argentina, uh, which is a strange situation, seeing that right, technically we're at war with so. them. So um, we did three concerts in Buenos Aires, which were just fantastic, and uh, managed to leave in one piece. Uh, and uh, came back to finish this. So many people hope that music can transcend political, religious differences. Did that work in Argentina? I think so. I think uh, it was a major uh, thing for us to have done that. I don't think that really our management or us were really totally aware of quite what we were doing when we booked this tour. Uh, but uh, when we got down there, we had a, a bunch of um, police escorts with us all the time. and. Uh, it was an amazing experience. Well, I'm glad scary as well, but but uh, I think it had a good effect. I'm glad that everybody got back in one piece so that you could finish off this, this show. Now this is, although it is live footage, it goes a lot further than that and that you've added many, many things to it. Can you tell us just kind of the process that you went through? Okay, well, it's, uh, the, you know, our show is two and a half hours long, but um, what we did, we selected beforehand like uh, an hour's worth, or actually 65 minutes worth of uh, the songs we wanted to use in the special. And um, we did the concert edit first, and then the people who did some of the Cars video effects, Charlotte's. Right, or uh, you might who, think. Right? Yeah. They added some uh, of their fairly esoteric and sometimes meaningless sort of uh, <laughs> effects to it, but also uh, some fantastic sort of uh, visuals too. You know, so we, we're jumbling them around at the moment, getting the whole thing to fit. It's looking great. Why don't we take a quick look at it? This is uh, Changes, which is a scene from the 9012 uh, Live presentation and yes on much music that's changes in a scene from 9012 live from yes and JD Roberts together with Chris Squire uh, how are the what are the plans to market this I was speculating on it before that maybe a television program maybe a home video cassette yeah well as I said it's about uh, 65 70 minutes long and uh, well, we're aiming to get uh, a special TV presentation, uh, you know, probably with one of the American companies like HBO and presumably with a similar uh, company in Canada. And of course, we also want to have a video cassette release and, uh, you know, maybe uh, eventually there'll be the individual parts of it, I don't know, if used in various um, TV promotional stations. Sounds good, so I guess fans can look forward to having another little bit of history. This is the first full-length or long-form video since Yes Songs back yeah, in 72? Yeah, in actual fact, it's, it's been silly, really, because Yes Songs got released in 72, but and then ever since then, in 76, we did a, a, a whole uh, film of the Philadelphia uh, concert we did with Peter Frampton, which was a, a fantastic concert. Filmed the whole thing, uh, got 80% of the way through it, spent a fortune, and then didn't finish it. So that's, and then we lost the tapes. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, that never happened. So then uh, there's, you know, there's this. Feel good to have the long form video out again? Yeah. Yes, it's, uh, it's been a lot, of, uh, a lot of hard work, but really enjoyable. Towards the end of the 70s, the original, yes, or I guess the, the form that it was in by that time, I guess sort of called it quits for a while, and then reformed around Trevor Horn and Jeff Downs of the Buggles, and then that lasted for an album and then went away and then back together again, I think it was late 1982? Well, uh, it wasn't actually back together again. What it was is that uh, after the, tre the Trevor Horn, Jeff Downs uh, version, uh, sort of uh, finished at the end of 1980, we uh, kind of decided to have a rest from it uh, and uh, 
I, I know that we'd been touring for like uh, 10 years, we made 15 albums, and it was time for it. Even though I wanted to go on to make another album at that time with Trevor Horn because, you know, we had a great rapport, uh, it, it wasn't actually a satisfactory situation for us to carry on. So we had a rest, laid back for a while. Alan White and I stayed together, Jeff Downs and uh, Steve Howe went to Asia, Asia yeah. and uh, then uh, Alan and I said, well, what should we do? Shall we uh, carry on with the band? Shall we uh, do studio albums like Steely Dan? Or we? And so we, we said, well, let's find somebody else to play with. So we got Trevor Raven. He came in and uh, he was, uh, you know, inspirational to us, as I think we were to him. We, uh, we had a very good... Uh, rapport between us and then we got Tony K back and it was going to be a band called Cinema. It was not going to be a rebirth of Yes at all. So we practiced for seven months discovering who Cinema was going to be. Then Trevor Horn came to hear us uh, rehearse after he'd been doing his ABC projects and his other uh, disco Malcolm McLaren things and he uh, was really intrigued by the band and so we decided to record. We went into the studio, made an album with him and in the last three weeks there was a couple of tracks without any uh, uh, vocals on and uh, we were having a bit of uh, trouble over so I said well I'm going to ask John if he wants to sing Bring on up John and <laughs> so he came and sang on him it sounded great we listened back to it and said well got to call ourselves this again how has it been to have almost everybody back together again for the last year and a half or so uh, it's been a great uh, year 1984 was great we did uh, 150 shows last year uh, which were the easiest uh, dates we've ever done uh, especially with the fact we've done the, the album, it, it was a real success and uh, everyone uh, enjoyed it. You going to continue from here? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do... Uh, so after this, this, film, this film is not a swan song, it is but another start. No, after this we're going to do another album. Great. We, yeah, we start rehearsing for that. Yeah. Look forward to it because I, I really love 90125, so looking forward to more good work. Chris, thank you very much for dropping by and thank okay. you for bringing us a preview of 90125. Okay. And be watching for that because it's going to be coming to your home very, very soon. Thanks again for dropping by. We'll leave you with Yes from 90125. And this is It Can Happen on Much Music.